YouTube. This is Bonnie from Dragon Soap with another soaping adventure. Today we are going to cut our Dragon Fire loaf soap and we're going to unmold our little silicone molds. Let's do the silicone molds first because you just, if you haven't used molds like these before, you won't believe how easy they are to unmold. You know, ah, oops, eeks. <laughs> I already, I already unmolded one this morning. I just couldn't resist. See, this is the Christmas cottage, and it smells wonderful. So if you've used plastic molds in the past, get a load of this. Now, I haven't done anything to this. I haven't loosened it or anything. I'm just going to pull the sides apart to loosen it, and then I'm going to turn it upside down. Come on. There we go. Ta-da! Don't you love that? If you're used to the freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing and pounding and whacking of plastic molds, you gotta love these. Come on. Out you go. Of course, these cost a lot more. There we go. I don't know if you can see the glitter. I sprinkled glitter in the molds before I poured. This one I got a little sloppy on the back, but... These, as I, I think I mentioned in the last video, I'm getting them from Soap Republic on Etsy. They're <clears throat> $17.50 each. Yikes! But, I mean, look at this. To me, it's worth it. This is the Rose Heart Mold. Is that in view? Do I need to move it down a little bit? Um, just beautiful. So, and I've been working on my um, good manufacturing practices, so I'm putting part numbers, just writing them in, in um, permanent ink. So my standard operating procedures and things can say, go use this mold. Okay. On to the log mold. And as you can tell, I've had this freezer paper out since yesterday, and that looked like <clears throat> a cat hair. Oh, gasp. Right. Just try to keep your cats off the counter. Okay. problem with this. Before I started doing the decorative techniques, I always did sea pop. And I would just pour the soap into the mold and just leave a flat top and put it in the oven. And um, at about 170, then I'd turn the oven off and I'd let it sit all night and it would gel all the way through and it would be ready to cut the next morning and I would even use it in the shower the next morning. Ooh. But with these decorative tops if you do that, what I found and what happened last night is that it will gel and then the the tops, the peak tops that you worked so hard on, will just sort of sink down in. And here and along here and here, the, the gelled soap just kind of oozed up around the decorative peaks. And the peaks fell down into it. And 
I still got some peaks there, but not as many as there were. So that's a little bit disappointing. And <laughs> yes, can you tell? I went a little crazy with the glitter. It's not supposed to look like it snowed on top of this. But what the heck? And I made a mistake yesterday when I was making this. I, I had intended to leave some of the soap uncolored and color or lighten some of it with titanium dioxide and then darken some of it with this burgundy oxide and I totally forgot to leave some of it uncolored so the only uncolored soap we have are the little the soaps from the silicone molds so this is just two colored soap instead of three colored soap boy that looks almost like milk chocolate doesn't it Yum. It doesn't smell like milk chocolate, though. It smells... Oh, what does this fragrance smell like? Kind of like... It's kind of spicy, I think. Um, I read the description in the other video, but... In case there's someone watching this one who wasn't watching the other one... Let's read it again, real quickly. Sophisticated, complex, and heady are the keys to this magnificent fragrance. It's so multifaceted you will find layers of musks, ambers, a touch of patchouli, neg, champa, cedars to warm and enhance this exotic fragrance, and much more. When soaked, it will turn a medium brown tan, apparently this, um, which fits this scent to a T. If you love Queen of the Nile, Gift of the Magi, and the more sophisticated fragrances, you'll love this beautiful scent. When testing, we found it begins to bloom in a few days and continues to become simply intoxicating. So, it is wonderful. <clears throat> okay, so we will start with... I always make my first cut skinny just to cut the end off. I don't know if we can get this all in the video. Let's try. Usually I cut the soap the next morning, but, and I made this last night, but I just didn't have time this morning. I needed to get a package in the mail before work, so. But it's still cutting nicely. Look at this. So the top sank, but they didn't sink low enough. Look, you can see I mushed it just a little bit with the top of the cutter. I was going to go to the kitchen store and see if I could find a cutter that was a little bit deeper. But So this is our... Burgundy oxide and a little bit of titanium dioxide. There's little bitty air bubbles in this one too. I think it's my um, stand up, stand up straight. Come on. Okay, lie down then. Um, could oops could be my stick blender. Could be. You know when I poured the olive oil into a glass container when I was measuring it, it had little bitty air bubbles in it. And when I looked at the olive oil that was still in the bottle, it did not have little bitty air bubbles in it. Um, so I stirred it around thinking maybe the air bubbles would rise through the oil, but they just sort of sat suspended in it. And so I heated it up a little bit and they dissolved into the oil apparently. But either I introduced more bubbles with the stick blender or they just undissolved in the soap. 
That's a weird idea, isn't it? Dissolving gases like air in liquids, but that's true. It happens. That's how you get. Oh, what? No, let's. That's how you get carbon dioxide in soda pop or beer. Not being a beer drinker, I think more of soda pop. Um, when I was taking chemistry in college and we were going through that kind of stuff, trying to remember the rules about temperature and pressure and everything that affects how gases are dissolved in liquids, I just would remember the soda pop can. If you keep it cooler, the CO2 stays dissolved in it longer. So when, ooh, I like that one. When it came time to take the tests, I just remembered the soda pop and what you needed to do, keep it under pressure and keep it cold to keep the CO2 dissolved. So, so. apparently some of those issues are involved in dissolving air in olive oil. Ooh, it is so warm today. I suppose you can hear the AC in the background. Oh, I like that one. I actually like the tops as they're coming out on the on the soap. A lot of times I like to do kind of a swoosh, 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 swoosh on the top of the soap. I think it looks nice on the log, but when you're cutting it, you get some weird stuff. I like that one too. This was again with the Celine Swirl. Let me show you what kind of tops I get when I do the swoosh swoosh that I really like. <clears throat> I have some of this rum nut cake I made a couple days ago, or a week ago. Where'd I put it? to not step on my dog. You get these kind of, this was where it kind of went swoosh, swoosh down the low, and it just, you know, it kind of looks funky. So I'm trying to not do that anymore. This is the one I made Saturday. This, the um, dragon fire I made on Sunday, this was cashmere, a cashmere knockoff I made Saturday. So I was very pleased with the way that turned out, but you can really see the air bubbles in the soap here, too. So that was a little disappointing, but... little kid in their blocks, you know, A, B, 1, 2, or Planet of the Apes, the original anyway, what was it, Return from Planet of the Apes or something, where the apes came back, and Zira's putting the blocks on top so she climbs up and gets the banana. Why isn't she eating the banana? Because I loathe bananas, she says. Wonderful movie. Ooh, that kind of looks like bananas and chocolate, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. You know, those are nice colors for this fragrance. The cashmere is a much more subtle perfumey fragrance than the Dragonfire. Much softer. So I wanted to go with softer colors for it. Um, and I wanted more dramatic colors for the Dragonfire. I was actually thinking red and orange and yellow or red and yellow and white or something for fire, but I 
course, when it turns the soap brown, you're not going to get red and yellow and white. But I like that. Should have done a little bit more of that lighter color. is the last it's kind of odd and then yes so that's it for cutting dragon fire I will touch those up clean up the sides a little bit and neaten them up a little bit and then let them cure I really do like the way those tops came out I was a little disappointed when I saw that they fell a little bit, but um, I'm actually happy with that. That's, I like that. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll have another exciting soaping adventure next weekend, because I only soap on the weekends, so thanks for watching. Bye!